Okay, uh, so for the first talk, uh, as per the title, we're going to just, uh, Connaughton and I, Mike Connaughton and I are going to give a review of the state of Lake Ontario. Um, there's two things. One, the, the main piece is giving the review of state, on, state of Lake Ontario. The second component is really just acknowledging all the hard work of our collaborators and partners. Uh, there's a multitude of programs that are out there on Lake Ontario. It's a complex ecosystem as most of you in the room are aware uh, and it's these partnerships and collaborations that bring those opportunities to understand and, and uh, interpret this ecosystem and whether we're achieving the objectives for the lake. Perfect. So uh, just as a brief overview, um, Lake Ontario is managed by nationally between the province of Ontario and the state of New York under the Great Lakes Fisheries Commission. Uh, we have fish community objectives that are agreed upon that sort of set the desired outcomes for the fishery and ecosystem of Lake Ontario. For today, we're reviewing the 2014-2019 State of the Lake. Uh, we're acknowledging this is sort of the last year of the next State of the Lake, which will cover 2020 to 2024. And uh, we want to just remind people of where we were and today in the talks that you're going to hear is the direction that things are going in Lake, uh, Lake Ontario. So just keep these things in mind. Uh, reviewing the near shore is own goal. Um, glasses need to be better, I can't read that far. Uh, so protect, restore and sustain uh, the diversity of near shore fish community with an emphasis on self-sustaining native fish such as walleye, yellow perch, uh, lake sturgeon, smallmouth bass, uh, largemouth bass, sunfish, northern pike, muscalunge, and American eel. Uh, the offshore pelagic zone goal, maintaining offshore <coughs> excuse me, pelagic uh, fish community that's characterized by a diversity of salmon and trout, so Chinook salmon, coho salmon, rainbow trout, brown trout, and Atlantic salmon, uh, and also keeping in mind the, the balance of uh, prey fish and predator prey demand. And then uh, deep Pelagic and offshore benthic zones, so protect and restore the diversity of the offshore benthic fish community composed of a mix of self-sustaining native species uh, like lake trout, uh, burbot, lake whitefish, deepwater cisco, slimy sculpin, and deepwater sculpin. So within the fish community objectives, we have these three zones. Uh, under these are a multitude of fish community objectives that have specific indicators. Um, through this process, as I mentioned, we have a variety of programs that speak to these. Um, I just wanted to highlight some of the programs here. So we have Creole programs, both uh, New York, this is for the Near Shore Zone Goal, New York and Ontario uh, run angler creole programs to provide some information on some of these key indicator species. Uh, we have uh, information from the eel ladders that come in. Uh, there's set lines and gill netting for sturgeon and uh, the fish community in general. Uh, we have also information coming in from our commercial fishery um, and also trawling. Uh, so these programs combined provide the information. Um, these are the photos people really like to see. It's out there with lots of fish. We're all fish head. Behind the scenes, there's a lot of people sitting at desks and pushing a lot of paperwork. That's also extremely important. So I do want to highlight their value here, although they're not pictured. I am one of the desk people these days, so I will just wanted to acknowledge that. Uh, there are a lot of other people involved outside of the field that uh, deserve some acknowledgement as well. So just to highlight that. Um, this is a very high level overview of the community objectives. Uh, the intention here is just to give sort of a traffic light approach. Um, I think the Michigan has their state of the lake out there. Um, same, same concept. So for the fish community objective under the near shore zone of maintaining healthy diverse fisheries, the indicator species of yellow perch, uh, swimmel bass and walleye, those are the programs we use for evaluation, which is the angler creole, gill netting, uh, trawling and commercial fishery. And at that time period, 2014 to 19, we were meeting the objectives with a, a stable trend. For lake sturgeon populations, this is more of a progress indicator as opposed to a status. And uh, we weren't meeting the progress indicators in that time period, and that was uh, stable. With American eel at the eel ladders, we also were not meeting the fish community objectives, and that was stable in that time period. This is almost where I'm handing it off to Mike Connerton, uh, but just quickly for the pelagic zone goal, again, highlighting the programs here. We have a uh, creole survey for New York, happens annually in Ontario. It's uh, at a lower frequency around every three years. That provides information on a lot of the predators, excuse me, predators out in the lake, uh, condition and uh, harvest information and catch rates. 
Uh, we also have same programs that happen in the tributaries, information from spawning indices, as well as uh, weirs and fishways that are utilized to get information around the predators. And then another important thing to note, uh, in that 2014 to 19 period for prey fish, we saw an evolution of that survey. A lot of hard work behind the scenes trying to figure out um, and challenge the assumptions that were made in those earlier surveys. And now we have a coordinated whole lake approach across agencies uh, that's performing this uh, index. And so here are the three vessels here, and I tried my best to do 50-50 um, for you know, predator-prey balance. Had to explain the visual. I don't know if you guys could see it. I couldn't see it from the back. Anyway, with that, uh, content will take over. And uh, thank you very much. If there's questions on that part, we can deal with it at the end. Thanks, Mike. Uh, I'm going to break it. You guys hear me okay? Okay. Um, so just following along with Mike um, and uh, just going over the offshore plastic zone, um, we have fish community objectives around maintaining trout and salmon fisheries, increasing prey fish diversity, um, maintaining predator prey balance, and then restoring Atlantic salmon populations, which is one of our native uh, pelagic offshore predator species. Um, and we use uh, recreational catch rates to, to index and uh, as an indicator of maintaining our fisheries um, for our maintaining prey fish diversity. We look at Elwife. Um, and we use trawling to evaluate the status of alloway and our other prey, benthic and uh, pelagic prey species. <clears throat> in uh, the last period, 2014-2019, um, we were meeting the uh, recreational um, offshore predator status was meeting and then uh, the trend was mixed and that was Mainly around some of our species were uh, declining. I think it was um, steelhead at the time were declining, so that en ended up being a mixed um, trend. <clears throat> Alewife populations were pretty good. We were meeting uh, the objective there, but the uh, Alewife biomass at the time was declining. For maintaining predator prey balance, we use Chinook weight is at age is our indicator, and we get that information from our creel survey biosampling, uh, from our spot, fall spawn assessment. Um, and at the time, we were meeting, and uh, weight of Chinook was declining at the time. And then uh, for Atlantic salmon populations, uh, restoring those, um, our creel surveys indicated relatively low levels. Atlantic salmon continued to be a, a challenge for us in restoring those populations, but uh, so we were not meeting those objectives, but they were stable in not meeting that objective. Moving on to the deep pelagic and offshore benthic zone goal uh, to protect and restore the diversity of the offshore benthic fish community. And again, we use a combination of creel surveys, but we also have a index gill netting survey that um, USGS and uh, New York DEC contribute to. Um, the, there's a community index netting program that Ontario also does and sets some offshore nets that would uh, catch lake trout. We have our um, trawling survey, benthic trawling survey that um, provides an index of the diversity and the status of those prey fishes. And I think that's everything there. Um, so it, the fish community objectives there were restore lake trout populations and um, status in 2014-2019 were mixed. Increased lake whitefish abundance. Uh, we are not meeting our objectives. Lake whitefish populations are low or were low then and but they were relatively stable. Increased prey fish diversity. The deepwater Cisco, slimy sculpin, and deepwater sculpin were indexed by trawling. Um, those, the status there in 2014 2019 was mixed um, in both the status and the trend. And then sea lamprey were meeting our objective there, um, and the trend was mixed. So, just, you know, going back to the zone goals. Uh, 
I think Andy talked a little bit about this this morning, but you know, overall in our near source zone, the the uh, indicator was fair overall. The offshore plastic zone was rated as good, and then as a whole, the deep pelagic and offshore benthic zone was rated as good. So as Mike said, you know, we're, it, we're coming up on this new reporting period from 2020 to 2024, and which will be available and we'll present next year or in 2025. Um, but, you know, the, the presentations you'll see today are just a combination of all the people that work on our programs. Um, you'll see some of the updates from our, our newly formed working groups from our Lake Ontario Technical Committee, and then some uh, updates on some of the research projects that are ongoing. And um, so stay tuned. I think we did that pretty quickly, right, Mike? Yeah. Okay. <laughs>